Hello again. Today we're learning about for loops. These are very useful and common across programming languages. For loops are a control flow statement. Control flow statements actually break up the way code would normally execute, allowing for certain pieces of code to run many times or even zero times. In this case, the for loop allows you to loop through the same piece of code for a set number of times. For example, you can have it run exactly three times and then move on to your next piece of code. All right, so how do we write a for loop? First, you start a for loop using this bright green statement. The curly brackets show where you would enter your own input. Loop list represents a list you cycle through in the for loop. Loop variable tracks which element you are currently using in loop list, and we'll see exactly what that means in our first example. Once you have line one complete, the piece of code you want to loop over comes next, with each line indented using the tab button. This can include as many lines as you want. To exit this for loop and return to how you would normally execute code, you simply stop indenting. Syntax, which is the actual formatting of the code, is very important here, especially since we are using a Python-based language, so make sure to pay special attention to where tabs are placed and where the colon is used. All right, let's see what this all actually means using an example. Here we have a simple for loop animation. Every half second, a number is printed from our list created with range 1, 10. Remember, this list will count from 1 up until, but not including, 10, so we get whole numbers 1 through 9. The loop variable will be elements of our loop list as we cycle through. So we have an animation where every half second, we see the next element in the list, starting with 1. Then we see 2, 3, and so on. Once we have completed cycling through the list, our code is complete because there isn't any code immediately following our for loop. Notice we are also using math to choose the x and y position of our text. The x and y positions are both 10 times the loop variable value. So 1 gets 10 printed at x position 10 and y position 10. 2 gets printed at x position 20 and y position 20. This helps us to space out our numbers so they don't overlap. Pause here if you need to so you can fully process what this code is doing and how it works. Now let's move on to another example. Instead of a list of numbers, let's loop through a list of colors and actually simplify an example from our list lesson. Here, we create a heart and have its color slowly change from violet to red to orange. Notice, our loop list is called colors this time and our loop variable, C, is a string this time instead of a number. Additionally, note that if you want to use the heart, you need this statement at the top, from icons import heart, which makes it available to use. For our last example, let's review the example we used in our variables lesson, which shows a growing circle that changes color. Now, what if we want to change its color more than once and change its size more than once too? For example, let's start at a size of 5 and increase it to 10, then 40. At the same time, let's start from the color white, change to red, then back to white again. How would we do this? See if you can recreate the video shown here before seeing the code. Pause here, and when you're ready, resume the video. Okay, here's what I did to accomplish this task. Note, your code can look different while still doing the same thing. So here's what I did. I made two different lists, grow and colors. Grow contained the last two sizes, 10 and 40. Colors contained the last two colors, red and white. In my loop, I looped over zero and one, the two indices for my two lists, since they both contain two elements. Now, this was definitely a difficult problem since it calls for three different lists, so no worries if you're not able to accomplish it on your own. Just trying to think through these problems is great practice and essential in programming. As a final note, you've probably noticed the statement starting with the number sign, also called a hash or a pound sign. These are called commons, and they can help to organize code when it gets long. The number sign tells the computer to ignore anything after it in that line, so you can write whatever you want. Here, I use comments to explain what the next chunk of code was doing. All right, so that was a lot to take in for for loops. Take your time making sure you understand how they work before moving forward, and I'll see you in the next lesson.